guys. Thank y'all for being here today. Uh, today we have Mr. Michael McFarland. Uh, he's an alumni of Lamar University. He's been working in a, the professional sales management for 25 years. He's also the former president of the Sales Marketing and Executives Club. And uh, currently he's the regional sales director at Culligan International, and he's uh, been with that company for 13 years. Uh, he's been married for 32 years. He has two boys named Anthony and Caleb, and he's the Scoutmaster for Troop 779 at St. Anthony Cathedral. So uh, let's thank him for being here, and uh, don't forget to sign out afterwards uh, with your, either your Cardinal One card or your Lamar One nine. All right? Let's do that. I don't know why I threw the Scoutmaster thing in there, but I thought that would be uh, uh, let you know a little bit about my personal life, not just my professional life. And uh, I think teaching young men life skills today to improve upon their their life later is an important important thing. Um, and I think I feel like that's uh, one of the ways of finding your strengths. Uh, that's what we're here today talk about is finding your strength. How many of you are here because your teacher said come and give some extra credit? Raise your hands high. I just want to know what we're dealing with. Okay. All right. Cool. And how many of you are here because you just said, man, that sounds like a great topic. I want to... I got one? Two? Okay. All right. Got a few. Great. Glad you're here. I promise we will not go through all 42 PowerPoint slides. In fact, this will not be a PowerPoint presentation. This will be a discussion. With that, I will ask some questions. You'll respond, hopefully. And uh, I will share some things about me, and hopefully you'll share some things about you. Uh, as we discover finding our strengths. What do you think we're talking about here? Finding our strengths. See, that's the first question. What do you think we're talking about? How many push-ups you can do? Huh? What do you think it is? You're smiling. What do you think it is? I just think uh, what we're capable of doing once we get to our career field. Yeah? What we're capable capable of doing once we get into the career field. You think you want to know about your strengths before you get there? Because that could help you find out what you want to do. How many of you have changed your degree plan once you started school here? Raise your hands high. There you go. I did. I started out as a mechanical engineer major, and I found out that, hmm, that wasn't for me. Obviously, if you know anything about engineering, there's a lot of desk work, and there's some, uh, some other skills that you need to possess and have strength in. For me personally, I said, well, I think I want to start in the business career. And uh, so I came back to school, and that's what I did. Just because you're good at something doesn't make that a strength. And I use the joke about how many push-ups you can do, about finding your strength. Uh, you know, some people are good at activities, physical activities. Obviously, athletes are good at that. But does every athlete make a really good sports announcer? Charles Barkley. <laughs> He's a little slow talking for, for some of those folks, but he does have some really good insight into the game of game of basketball. What else about finding our strengths? What are we really talking about? Cap capabilities once you move into your career field. Um, but it's really more than that. It's more than that because it's about the passion and the commitment that you have in a specific activity. If you're going in for medical treatment, God forbid you have to do that, but let's say you do. Do you want a nurse who's really not into it? Just, you know, kind of a I'm here to get my paycheck, and I'm just doing a J-O-B job. Do you, do you want a nurse with that type of attitude? 
that the answer is kind of like, nah. What are you looking for? What are you looking for? For some, a caregiver. What are you looking for? Compassion. Compassion? What else? Anything? What else? What? A competent nurse. A competent nurse. Define competent. Um, knowledgeable. Which arm to take your blood pressure yeah. out of? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How to use a stethoscope? What else goes along with that field as a possible a strength? Too. What's that? A person's personality. I mean, yeah. person. <laughs> What's that? People. You do, don't you? You need to be able to communicate, have some compassion, have some uh, personality, you know. I didn't want to spring this on you too early, but since it was brought up, we're going to take a little test today. A personality test. Yeah. How many of you have ever done that? Taken a person? You have? Cool. What personality are you? What did you learn? Uh, that I'm an extrovert and I'm more judgment and I'm more... There are up to other things. Yeah. But those are two things, extrovert and judgment. We have two personalities. Most of us have a dominant and a not so dominant <clears throat> personality. We'll take the test again. Maybe, you know, you have a personality at work, then you have kind of a personality in the social se sector. Uh, we're going to talk about the professional side of it today, because uh, that's what we're here to do. <coughs> According to uh, Marcus Buckingham, he's the author of Go Put Your Strengths to Work. It's a book he wrote. He said, a better definition of a strength is an activity that makes you feel strong and a weakness is an activity that makes you feel weak. So with that being said, even if you're good at it, and it drains you, that is a weakness. And what do, I, what do I mean by drain you? You're just not emotionally lifted. <coughs> it's like a drag. Remember the J-O-B job reference? You know, we all do those things. I mean, I mean come on, I did it when I was in my teens. I was a uh, cashier jockey. For, <laughs> that's a registered person. Um, for a drugstore. And, you know, was I good at it? Yeah, I smiled at everybody that came through and I took their money and I made change for them. But was that where I wanted to be? Absolutely not. So how do you think people influence your strengths? Can people have an impact on you? <laughs> They probably say, man, you tall fella, you ought to be playing basketball. Did ever be anybody ever tell you that? The hat? You don't play basketball, do you? See, there you go. What do you like to do? Just hang out. Just hey, you good at it? Could be a string. Can you get paid to do it? Yes. No, you What? How do you do that? Uh, in Congress, if you're a lobbyist. Oh, yeah, you can get paid to hang out. You can get paid to hang out. But you end up paying more money. Well, no, that's fine. I'm with you. That's good. Good rebuttal. Are you a law major? No, okay. should be, though. <laughs> you see, we're finding some strengths in here today. So how can people influence you as far as you're finding your strengths? I mean, I guess if I'm willing to try it out, you know, because I don't know what I'm good at or not good at, if I don't know what I'm good at. Yeah. That's right. <coughs> nothing venture, nothing gain. Some possible answers of, as we talk about finding your strengths and what you like to do if it's hanging out. Be good at it. <laughs> or be a lobbyist. Four signs that uh, 
four signs of a string. Success, success meaning it's your effectiveness in an activity. Do you, do you reach some goals? Do you complete the task? Are there things that you do in whatever it is that you're doing that you have success at? If you're having some success in what you do, it could be a strength. The instincts. The instincts are the things that you look forward to, you look forward to doing, and capitalize on them. Think about that for a minute. Anybody? What is it that you look forward to doing this afternoon, tonight, as it relates to your career, your profession, or wherever it is that you want to take your, your life? You really look forward to doing it. Huh? What do you want to do when you get out of here that you really look forward to doing? Helping people. Helping people? Study more, and you look forward to that. Well, that's good. Maybe you ought to be a teacher, right? Grow. You are growing when you concentrate on an activity, and time really flies by. Now you think about that. We started this thing at twelve thirty-five because because we started at twelve thirty-five. But <laughs> I didn't want to throw Jacob on the bus. But the real deal is, if you enjoy something so much, man, time flies by, doesn't it? You get started in a project, you get started working on, with a group, an activity, maybe it's studying, hopefully time flies by so you can do some other fun things. But you think about it, that could be a strength where you enjoy that activity and time flies by. Need. Needs. Some activities make you feel tired, but you're fulfilled in, in completing them or doing them. And I go back to the nurse or the caregiver um, example. Compassion, a people person, some skills, but that can be a very draining activity or a draining occupation, can it? I mean, think about it. Do nurses get a lot of time to sit down? Not really. Can uh, those who are really good at it, they, they have some fulfillment, right? Some sense of fulfillment. What do you think that might be? Your patient character. didn't die. What's that? The patient didn't die. Well, that's that's one ultimate fulfillment right there. <laughs> let's say, let's let's flip the other side here, and let's say a recovery, a hundred percent recovery. They're back on their feet. They're, they're they are healed in their whatever it was that, that brought them into that situation. A sense of fulfillment that. While it may be a drain, it's not a weakness because they're fulfilled inside. Does this make sense? You, okay. Uh, you know, I'll tell you, in preparing for this, this topic on finding your strengths, you know, I thought long and hard about my career, about my life, and what what I thought my strengths were, and I definitely found out what my weakness and weaknesses are, um, not just recently, but throughout my, my life, and, and I, I want to tell you, it's probably one of the most revealing things that you can do is take a little intros introspective look at yourself and not what others are thinking and saying about you. You follow this? Because when it really comes down to it, what's it, what's it mean what other people think, right? 
what your strengths are or what your strengths are. It's not what they think you ought to be doing, and it's not what they think you should not be doing. So let's do this. Let's take a uh, that personality test. Read, read column A, B, C. What were your totals at the bottom? A. A is 50. B is 50. C is 19 and D is 27. Okay, so B and D were your highest? Yeah. Your highest totals? Well, you're obviously, as as you described yourself in your personality there, you're obviously somebody in the driver category that's uh, intense, concerned with time, impatient, demanding, controlling. You can be rigid, not so much. What was yours? Your totals. <coughs> High B, low D. Those of you that took your pers this personality test or a similar one before, anything different relative to what you learned about yourself? No? How many amiables do we have in the group? The column here, D, where your that number was really high. You did? Interesting, overhearing the conversation we had earlier, you know, you, you have some compassion for others, obviously. Uh, I think, does that pretty much describe you? Yeah, that's interesting. Anybody else? How about analytical? People who scored high in column A. Yes? What's your degree? Could you figure that one out, huh? Accounting, beautiful. Anybody else analytical? Yeah? What? What's your major? Accounting. Mechanical. Mechanical engineering? <coughs> yep. Can you find some strengths in these things that you have just graded yourself on? Obviously, those who are analytical know that you're in the right field if you like numbers, if you're detail-oriented. But what this really can help you understand is how you are, what your personality is, and how you relate to others. I was talking with a gentleman earlier about networking. And do you think our personality has an impact on what other people think about us? Can some people be turned off by your personality? Yeah. An overly expressive person can be what? A little obnoxious, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, a driver who is really over the top, those of you who are drivers, and you get into that controlling mode, you're outside the, the circle, as they say, that can be a little bit, what would you say, uh, like Tommy Lee Jones. How many of you watch movies with Tommy Lee Jones? You know, you know this guy, he's an actor? In The Fugitive? Or U.S. Marshals? If you watch that show, that movie, Tommy Lee Jones is a He's the guy barking all the orders. He's the one pointing fingers telling people what to do. That can be a little unnerving. Who likes to be told what to do all the time? Uh, <coughs> do you have a question? No. No? No. <laughs> what did you learn about yours, your personality? Well, I'm not sure. Can you explain where it falls in that? Yeah. I, was, I was a high C and D. 
C and D? Yeah, that's where my eyes were. Okay, that's over here on the right hand side mm -hmm. as expressive. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your personality before. Do these things describe you at all? The first, the top one, which one was your highest score? My highest was D. D? Mm -hmm. Not you at all? No. You know, sometimes, did you think about it how you are at work or how you are normally? Well, kind of at work, but it's hard to do where I work because it's not really like a business thing. Okay. So. You want to share anything else about that? Well, it's like, like I'm a dance teacher, so like there's, I mean, I guess it's like professional, but not really, so it's like you're not really like business-wise there, you're kind of more like fun. What age group are you teaching? All. All ages? Three to 18. Okay. So you have a, uh, a group of kids or young people that you're helping mm -hmm. teach dance, mm -hmm. ballet, and other? Everything. Everything. Mm -hmm. So let me ask you this. In, in your business setting, mm -hmm. you probably need to be a little bit more of the driver, right? That's what I need. Mean. Yeah. But you're more expressive. You're probably the top two on a normal setting. Probably so. But I could be that bottom. Here's the beauty of this. You've got two numbers on your page. One high, one next high. Okay? Those are your normal tendencies. We can actually be all four of these depending on what type, what setting that we're in. If you're in sales, in sales and marketing, you really want to be all four because the, the yeah, that's, there's medicine for it, but, <laughs> and I took mine this morning, seriously, because you know what you are as, as a personality, your strengths, where you score high, but what you really want to know is what the other person is. Why? If you're trying to convey a thought, a message, sell a product, you need to know what, how they think, feel, work. You, their, mental, their mental state. If I'm talking to an analytical, I want to use words like research. Here's some of the research that we've done. This is what I've found. Here are the specifications for the project that we, we're developing for you. If I can use words that they identify with, right? What do you think the connection for that's going to be? Quick? Not so quick? If we're talking about expressives, we want to use words like, this is really going to be fun. <laughs> You're going to enjoy the results of having this for your company. Um, you want to find words that they can identify with. You want to talk with your hands, possibly. You be a little more demonstrative in your, uh, in your presentation, if you're going to do a presentation. The drivers, if you're dealing with a driver, it, you should be focused on time, be clear, concise, to the point, don't beat around the bush, and an expressive will drive a driver nuts. Okay, not a real, not a real big connection. This is what I learned in my personal life as it relates to to these uh, personality. Being married 32 years, and I know where I'm at in in my personality. I'm a driver expressive. Where do you think my wife is? 
Been married 32 years now. That's a long time in today's world. I just saw that another celebrity ended their union after 10 years. <laughs> Gwyneth Paltrow and somebody. Um, they, they change. They change spouses like, you know, we change shoes and socks. So she's at the bottom of all this. She's the analytical enemy. So if you think about relationships, not only professional and per but personal, knowing where you are and knowing where that person, other person might be, how well you connect. The old saying, opposites attract. Truly so. Truly so. So what does this have to do with finding your strengths? You know, what are you good at? Doesn't necessarily mean that that's the place you need to be. Let's take a quick review of all this. What were those four <coughs> things? Four, I wish I could write it on the board, but if you followed it, four signs of a strength Four signs of a strength. Success. Instinct. Instinct. Growth. Growth. And needs. Okay, four. If you look at the first letter of each one of those words, and you put them in a line, what does it spell? The four signs of, of strength. How many of you are working today? You, you've got a job, you go to it every day. You start. What, what do you do? Um, salesman for Allstate. A salesman for Allstate. For the local agent here? Yes, sir. Mr. Walters? No, I work for Philip Maye, all major. Okay, cool. And. Sounds like you enjoy it. You're wearing the shirt. A walking billboard. Awesome. That's right. That's right. And so tell me a little bit about what you find in your job as or career as it relates to your strengths. What, what do you think that might be? You definitely have to be with people person. Uh, not only people calling them trying to, I don't use the word persuade, but persuade them to buy from you, but all the time people call and are upset with the prices or they're emotional because they just got in a car accident and you try to tell them things, but their adrenaline and emotions from they could be hurt or whatnot, how to calm them down and cope with their feelings. I mean, it takes literally all four of those to do it because you never know what's going to end of the phone line. So you, in your, in your career, you've identified that you need to be an amiable, an analytical, as kind of the old, yeah. old saying goes, it takes every personality to make the world go around. I mean, you never know who you're going to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, and especially in sales. Especially in sales. In the accounting world, it's a numbers game, and you're looking at numbers daily, right? Mm -hmm. Depending on the type of accounting, let's say it's corporate accounting, not just tax returns. Is that which field do you prefer to, to follow? Being an auditor. Interesting. What do you think some strengths will be that you will need to possess in being an auditor? Detail oriented. How do you feel about investigative strengths? Being able to see beyond the number and why that number is the way it is. An auditor is going to need to look beyond just what's on the page. Follow me? A good friend of mine is an auditor for a law firm in Chicago. He's really good at it. <coughs> because he, he knows how numbers get where they belong. And he knows what happens when they don't. Because they don't add up. As we look upon our afternoon here about finding our strengths, each and every one of you have a talent, a skill, 
a passion. You got to figure out what that is. As we said earlier, as we raised our hands, those of you who have changed your major once, maybe twice, you're a little uncertain as to what I want to do with the rest of my life. Do I just want to hang out because I'm really good at it? People tell me I'm I'm just fun. I can right. And you can make money at it, as our friend said here, if you want to move to Washington or Austin and be a lobbyist. So think about what it is that you really enjoy doing. You get energized by what you do. It's not a drain on you emotionally. We think back. Let's talk about dance. Are you tired at the end of the day? Yes. You are? Yes. Is it because you're tired physically or you're tired mentally of dealing with the people that... Both. Both? Mentally and physically. Obviously, you were a dancer when you were young, right? Yes, for 17 years. How long? I think I've been doing it for 17, 18 years now. Most of your life, I would guess. Exactly. Wow. Cool. And the sense of fulfillment that you want to get out of that is what? That... I helped a little girl that day to do something that when she walked in class she couldn't do, but when she left she had it perfect. You know, that that right there, that's a strength. That's very fulfilling. That is, and thank you for sharing that. It's not very often you find people with a passion that would like to share it with you. And having our discussion a little bit earlier, it's about helping other people, right? You know, that pay it forward thing. Now, I know this is a little off topic as it relates to finding your strength, but we do complicate things sometimes in our lives and, and in the professional world where we get caught up in the numbers of doing things just for the sake of making a buck. That could be a little askew, would you say? It's not all about the money, although that is what pays the bills. Show of hands, how many of you have ever worked at a, at a job or had a job where you just, you go, man, I don't like doing this. I mean, raise your hand, because I'm going to raise mine, because I've worked at a at a company that I just, well, it was, it was back in my drafting days, my drawing days, the design days. You're on the board eight hours a day, or sometimes longer, and you don't get to see the outside. That, you don't, you don't feel real good when you get up and walk out. For me personally, that's, I did, I had an epiphany, I said, I, I can't do that anymore. That's not, I'm not fulfilled in that, in that career, in that endeavor. All those, the signs of success, the instincts and, and growth and needs, all those things play a part in making a change to be in the business world where you can go out, make as much money as you want to make, but the bottom line is, as we were talking about earlier, helping people get what they want the way they want it. And the Allstate guy back here, you're in good hands. <laughs> Pay me later. Uh, what else what questions do you have? I mean, you probably came in here and you said, finding your strengths, what's all this about? What? How's this guy going to help me do that? Got to pick on my business journal reader guy back there. Uh, came in reading the business journal for Southeast Texas. What did we learn? What, what were you reading? About the oil pipeline coming through. Yeah. What do we know about the economy in Southeast Texas? What's it predicated on? Oil. 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 
What started here in what, 1901, somewhere in that range? Spindle Top? Yeah. Is that the strength of our community? You think? Really? Huh? I said probably not. Probably not? We're diversifying. We're getting a little more in the health care. A lot of hospitals popping up. So in knowing what you want, when you walk out of here today, will you feel, do you think you'll have a better understanding as to how to find your strength? <coughs> you know your personality, obviously. When you graduate with your degree, are you solid, dead set, this is where I'm going to be? This is what I want to do? You don't have to raise your hand on that, but I just want you to think about it. Are you going to have the passion and the commitment that it's going to take to be successful? Are you going to deliver that to the to the company or to the group, the people that you work with, you work for? How many know, uh, have heard Dave Ramsey? You've heard of this guy named Dave Ramsey. <coughs> Not so many, a few hands. What do we know about Dave Ramsey? Very wise, financial, not financial. He's not only wise and financial, he's a, he's a personal <coughs> life coach kind of guy. He's, he can write, he can help you out in a lot of different ways. And uh, Dave Ramsey is one of the sources I use for preparing for this because, <coughs> because of his broad base of knowledge and the fact that he has developed books, tools, techniques, to help people find their strengths, find out what's important to them, and help them achieve their goals and what they want to do in life. Uh, I'm talk to you a little bit about my personal story, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that. We talked about petrochemical, you know, downturn in the economy back in the uh, mid 80s one of the worst things you can do or have told to you as a senior going into interviews is hey look give us your resume we're not hiring right now but when we do we'll be sure and call you well, that was reassuring after however many years of going to school that <laughs> there's really nothing for you but we're going to do our best to, to interview you I hope you don't find yourself in those in that boat or in those shoes. So that's where I, I had to find a, a new path, a new career. And I chose a business world. And thanks to, uh, to Amy and, and the College of Business here, I've been able to help, or hopefully help, students like yourself who are trying to find out what they want to do in life and where they want to go because yeah the path can change can it it's not always well, there's going to be bumps in the road there's going to be things that you you have to overcome obstacles does the learning stop just when you graduate <laughs> i can tell you 53 years old it's still learning for me I'm learning each and every day. And we mentioned Dave Ramsey and the Zig Ziglers of the world and the people who we look up to in our, in our professional and personal lives. And you mentioned about helping a little girl do something that day that she didn't walk into the studio knowing how to do. The great, one of the greatest passions and fulfillments that I have in what I do in, as a regional director, I work with franchisees who own Culligan dealerships from Texas to Utah. I help not only the dealership in their, the way they operate, but also with their salespeople. 
their household salespeople and their commercial salespeople. One of the greatest compliments paid recently was a salesperson sent me a picture, if this was uh, in January, sent me a picture of his ring. With our company, if you achieve a certain level of success in sales, you receive a ring. It's a nice ring. Now, the, the thing that's really cool about it is when Rick sent that picture to me, he says, I finally got my ring. And he, he did a selfie, a hand selfie. <laughs> he just, you know, stuck it out there and showed me what it looked like. And he said, thanks for all your help. I didn't do all the selling. He did all the selling. What do you think it took to, to have Rick earn that ring? Huh? <coughs> Where did it start? What do you have to have first if you're going to excel or achieve something? Motivation. Motivation. A goal. A goal. What do we know about goals? Need to be measurable, definable. There's a, there, there's, a, there's a formula for that. They call it SMART or SMART goals. And each one of those <coughs> letters represents a specific element in setting goals. So we Rick set a goal. He knew what he had to have at the end of the year in order to, to earn that ring. He had to deliver on his skills. He had to keep practicing, drilling and rehearsing the things he does each and every day to go out and help people improve the quality of water for their lives. Now, I'm not going to get into a big Culligan commercial with you on that, but if you know anything about the oil industry, like our friend over here reading the business journal, Water is probably one of the key elements, if not the most important element in life. Would you agree? Because without it, what happens? You pretty much dry up. Kind of like West Texas. It's pretty dry out there. So that, that's my story and why I made a change to the business world instead of the engineering, drawing, mechanical engineering world. And in helping other people get what they want, I'm fulfilled in what, what I do. Rick's story is just one of them. I hope that by sharing insights into what's brought me here today will help somebody, one, two, however many, look at your life and go, hey, I got strengths here. I'm really good at this, but I'm not really happy about it, so maybe I ought to change and find something I'm really happy about doing, or I am fulfilled in what I'm doing. You mentioned studying more. What do you want to do when you grow up? Engineering? What kind of engineering? Mechanical? Isn't that funny? The two people who are sitting in the front row are where I wanted to start my life. That's amazing. Thank you for being here. I hope you can continue down the path. I've known some very successful mechanical engineers. And uh, one of them is actually president of a company here in town. He, he stuck to it. He went through all the ups and downs of the petrochemical world and found, found his home. He's really done well. So you're probably going, well, gee, is that going to be it? This guy's going to talk and not show us anything else? Absolutely not. We have some more cards. I'm not going to ask you to take another test, but you're... <coughs> I, want to, 
I want to share with you this. You do this on your own time, okay? We don't have time for it here. Richard Step Business and Career Clarity. This is a free aptitude test to determine what your skills and weaknesses are. <coughs> RichardStep.com. When you take this test, you'll get your top five strengths, your bottom weakness. Take about 10 to 12 minutes. Where you start is right here at this question. Describe the most frustrating thing that you've had to do in the past few days at home or work or anywhere else and explain why that why that's frustrating or why it was frustrating. And then there's some questions. Each one has a drop down menu and that's why we're not going to take the test here. This is why you can do it <coughs> on your time. But it wouldn't be fair for me to ask you to take the test without sharing the results that I came up with. And that is my top. My top strength was self motivation. Thank goodness when my alarm clock goes off, I do get up and I don't hit snooze three times or have anybody kick in the bed saying, get out of bed, go to work. <laughs> Adaptability. By the way, that first one was 88%. Adaptability was 81%. Faith was 81%. Visionary, 81%. Innovation, 75%. Those were my five strengths. Focus was my weakness. If you couldn't tell, we kind of started talking about finding your strengths to our personalities and we bounced back to um, our stories. But at the end of today, we're back to finding our strengths. We kind of made a circle. All right? Isn't this something, huh? Kind of neat? What do you think? So as we, as we look at the rest of our lives, today, the week, the month, the year, I just want you to think about where you want to go, what do you want to do, where your strengths are. Don't listen to what other people are telling you. Okay. With, with some, some bit of... Uh, Tolerance. With some bit of tolerance, because come on, you know yourself better than anyone. But figure out where you want to be, or what your strengths are, and how to capitalize on them. That's going to help you find the career, do the things that are most fulfilling to you, and I think you'll, in doing so, be able to make the money you want to make because you know without that we're not we're not paying the bills. So with that, I'd like to entertain any questions you might have, anything about me personally or professionally, I'd like to share it with you. And I think you were in the class on how to influence others. Nope. Nope. Good. Glad you're here today. Anything? No? Yes, sir? Did you get your list out? Yeah, uh, did I? Yeah. No, I did not. It, great question, though. You know, only uh, less than 2% of scouts in the scouting program well, earn their The whole self motivation thing, I was wondering if you got your <coughs> It's a regret that I have, but here's what I want to share. Thank you for asking about that. As a scoutmaster, 80% of the scouts in our troop have earned their Eagle Scout Award. 80%. Now, that's, that's, that's unheard of. That blows away the numbers. But here's the thing. 
I try to coach those kids into completing the, the whole process. Don't, don't start something you can't finish. And don't lose interest because I'm here to tell you I have a son, two sons, but one of them is an Eagle Scout. And the, if you know anybody in the scouting program, those doors open wide when you can say that you've completed that. Are you a scout? No, sir. I got a buddy that got in the Air Force because he was being scout. The doors open wide for that. But look, that's finding a strength, that's finding, that's passion, commitment, but um, it's also some leadership too. Anything else? Thank you.